Um, so we're going to talk uh, now about how to actually set up and run your sim vascular simulation. So we've already talked about modeling, um, building your model, uh, creating the mesh, and applying a bunch of different inflow and outflow boundary conditions. So now we're back to the model that um, you used last week with the, I think, in tutorials seven and eight. Um, so a little bit more simple of a model. So we're going to, just like we did before, create a simulation. Um, so you right click on the simulations and create simulation job. So we're gonna name this, you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name it study. Yeah, we can just name it study. But anything that's descriptive for you to remember. Um, okay, so now you can see in your simulation, um, in the simulation tab that's popped up, we have a bunch of different uh, options that we're gonna have to fill in. Um, so if we start back up with basic parameters. So here we have the um, density, the fluid density and the fluid uh, dynamic viscosity. So these are the default values if we're using CGS units, which um, most models should be in that. Um, if for some reason your models uh, in millimeters, you're gonna have to adjust these. Uh, we'll just leave them for now. Um, we're also going to leave, so since we're running a rigid wall simulation, we can leave the initial pressure set to zero. And uh, the initial velocities are also, for all intents and purposes, they're, they're very small, they're basically zero. So we'll just leave all of those for now. So then we already talked about this last time, so we have to reset them because I made a new simulation but we're going to, again, prescribe the velocities here. So you can see the previous tutorial if you forget about that. But we've set the velocities and we're gonna just make uh, resistance boundary conditions. But we just talked about how to make um, a bunch of different kinds of boundary conditions depending on your model. We're gonna do resistance. We're just gonna set them both to a thousand for right now. Um, okay, so that's we. Now we're on to a new. This is the wall properties. So we're just gonna leave this as a rigid simulation. So that means that the walls of your model are fixed. Um, in future tutorials, we're gonna talk about deformable simulations. And so what that means um, is that the fluid and the, and the structure can interact. And so you'll see the walls of your model uh, deform. But we're not gonna do that in this version. So then we are on to, this is the most things you have to set. So now we're in the solver parameters. So this uh, section tells the actual um, SV solver how to run your simulation. So we have to pick a number of different things. So first, we're gonna look at the number of time steps. So this is how many time steps your model is going to run for. This is just a rigid simulation. So we can do something like 100 is fine. And then the time step size is how uh, your model progresses. So we're gonna set this to um, one millisecond, uh, 10 to negative third uh, is a pretty good value. So, this can quickly, if you're, say you're running for a lot more, you're running a thousand or 6,000 time steps, that's all of a sudden a lot of solution points. So now we have to control how often we're actually writing our solution out. Because you probably don't want it, you don't need every single millisecond, that's more data than we want to have. So we're gonna, this is how often we actually save the solution data. So we're gonna set this to 10, so it'll save, um, you could, you, 10 is a fine number for here. It'll kind of depend on how, um, how much discretization you want in your results. So um, now we have a bunch of things that we're gonna leave the same. So we do want uh, stresses on the surfaces. So we'll leave that set to true. The force calculation method, um, so there's two options, well, there's, velocity residual or both. We'll leave this to velocity based. All that does is control, um, it's used for your wall shear stress calculation. Um, and then we are, these are just controlling what's printed out. So we can leave those. 
the step construction um, is the number of linear and nonlinear iterations per solve. I'm going to increase this to four. Um, for a more complicated model, you might increase it even more, but um, four is good for now. We're leaving pressure coupling and the backflow stabilization. Those we can just leave. Uh, we won't have to update. So then this section right here controls your non-linear linear iterations of the solver. So we do want residuals. Um, and we're going to increase, we're gonna decrease this to um, 10 to the negative third also. And that'll just make our solution um, a bit more converged. So then we're into um, the section that controls the linear solver. And so again, so for this model, we're using the Navier-Stokes solver, that's NS. Um, and we're going to, in, we're gonna, these tolerances just for better convergence, we're also gonna decrease. I'm gonna change that also to 10 to the negative third. And these I'm gonna update to 0.01. Um, and then, will increase the number of iterations. Again, all of these things that are being changed just improve the convergence of your solution. So it'll make your, your um, the results you get more, uh, you'll, you'll run them for enough, uh, it'll run, the solver will run for enough time that you'll have um, results that are actually finalized. So we're gonna increase the number of iterations for your Navier-Stokes solver to 10 and for the momentum loop also to 10. The, we can leave this at 400. And then we don't have to change anything down here. Uh, these default values will all be fine. So those are the solver parameters. So we've, again, we've gone through basic parameters related to the fluid and the model, the boundary conditions, whether we're running a rigid or a deformable simulation, and then all of the parameters that we've set, which control the actual um, solution, the, the solver itself. So we've set all those values. And now we're at the point where we're going to, we have to actually generate the files that the solver um, will read. So we're gonna use, we're gonna use the mesh that we've already created, the one that we called mesh. And so now we're at the point. So if you go into your, um, if you go into your folder for the um, for the simulation, there won't be any files there. So what we have to do is create the data files for simulation. So you can see at the bottom down here it says creating data files, and now it says the files have been created. So that actually writes out all the values we put in to text files. And at that point, um, we can, if you have um, MPI installed on your computer locally, you can use MPI and increase the number of processors that we're gonna use to run the simulation up to eight. So what that means is it'll just take your job and it will distribute it across um, eight different processors. So that will speed things up significantly because it will take your model and split it into eight chunks and all of those can run in parallel. Um, so instead of, it, it'll make it um, faster in that regard since there's more computers doing the work for you, more processors doing the work for you. Um, we can just leave that at one for now. And then you could also change the starting step number. So if we don't wanna start at time step zero, we could put in a different number here. So that might be useful if you, maybe you've run a simulation and you realized, oh, I actually wanna run this for more time. So if you'd already run 100 time steps, you could say, I wanna start at 100 and run for an additional 100 time steps. Um, that's what this would do. Um, you could also say, oh, there was something, something went wrong, my computer crashed, uh, my computer died, and I had only made it to like the 30th time step. So I wanna keep going from there. So you could start it there. We haven't run anything, so we'll start at time step zero. So at that point, um, you can hit run simulation. And so you can see in the bottom, it says running simulation, and it's so far 0% completed. So at that point, um, you just have to wait. 
depending, so this mod, this mesh is 200,000 elements, which isn't huge, but it's not the smallest it could be. So I think this will take to run the simulation on this computer with one processor. I'm guessing it'll take about somewhere between 20 minutes and an hour maybe. Um, so you can see now it's 1% completed. It shows, um, so you can see at the bottom, it'll show you uh, the exact details for this are on the SimVascular website, but it shows you a bunch of different um, information down here. So we're on the first time step. It's showing us the residual, the current residual is, um, so it's getting small. It got bigger because we're moving. Yeah, every time step, it, it will increase and then decrease again as it goes through its iterations. Um, so then, it, yeah, it shows a bunch of different pieces of information here. Um, and so that will just run in the background while we're not going to sit here and let it finish. But next tutorial, we'll look at the completed results and see how to post process them. But just to see what happens while it's running. Um, now, if you go inside of your, so I'm, this is my folder for the, um, for the simulation, or for, this is the folder, the SimVascular folder for our model. And if we go into the simulations subfolder, you can see that now we've created this, the SimVascular made a folder called study. And that's where it wrote out all of our, um, when I clicked that button, create simulation files, uh, create data files for simulation. Um, it wrote out these files. So the, the bct.dat and bct.vtp are both um, show you the inflow boundary conditions. So next tutorial, you'll use ParaView to view your results. Um, VTPs can be viewed in ParaView and you'll just see, this will just show us the inflow um, at our, our aorta cap. Uh, this flow file is the same as that steady flow dot text. So this will, this is the inflow waveform. Um, the geom BC is, uh, it shows you the geometry. That's where the geometric information is written. Um, I'm skipping some because they're related to the simulation, but mesh complete is, this just shows, this is our mesh for the model um, where the solution is uh, solved on at all those different points. NumStart.dat shows us the time step that the simulation is currently on. So that, if we go ahead and open it, you can see that it's, so it hasn't written anything out. It's on time step, it says it's on time step zero, but that's just because it hasn't made it to the 10th time step where we saved yet. Okay, so then the restart file is where our solutions are written to. So this is at the zeroth time step. There'll be one at every save point. So the next one will be restart.10. Uh, solver.imp is the solver's input file. And then this .svpre file was used, um, that was written out initially. And then the SimVascular ran this to generate like the boundary condition in the GeonBC and restart. Um, so then, once you start the simulation, you end up with a log file and the history.dat file, which uh, this is, this history.dat saves every single line like we could see at the bottom of SimVascular with all the different columns. Um, so again, on the SimVascular website, there is uh, detailed information about what every single one of those columns mean. So you don't have to look at these, but um, if you're interested in how you're checking on how your simulation is going, um, just to make sure it's still running, then these files um, can be used for that. And again, so now if we go back to SimVascular, we can see that we are now 5% completed. We're on the fifth time step. Um, so we need 100 time steps. Yeah, I'm guessing it'll probably be half an hour that it'll take this. But um, next week, we will look at the files that are created uh, from the simulation and how you'll actually post-process them.